Uh, first of all, what is CERT? Uh, what is the meaning of that acronym is Community Emergency Response Team. The T is also used sometimes as training, so you may find it one way or another. The CERT started uh, back in the 80s when LA decided to, they have to do something. You know, LA, they have earthquakes, they have mudslides, they have everything there. Um, so they sent some people to Japan to see how they were dealing with those problems, how they had the community ready for that. Around the same time, uh, the Mexico City had an earthquake, 1985, I believe. And so they also sent some people to help and also to see how they cope with that problem. What they found was that uh, they counted about 800 uh, bystanders, people that were OK, that didn't suffer any consequences during the earthquake, that decided to help, like any one of us may do in a situation like that. But they also found that of those 800, 100 died trying to help another people. So they said, well, we have to do something. People want to help, but they may not know how to help. They may not know how to uh, size up a, a situation and see if it's safe or not to be there. So they started a program um, uh, in, in LA, small program. And around the 90s, early 90s, they, uh, FEMA took the idea. They said, oh, this is, this is good. They already have some uh, use of the CERT idea during the earthquake in 94, in January of 94. They used that, and it did work. It did work. So FEMA took it and said, we can use this nationwide. And they set up a program that uh, was intended to be used in any community that wanted to do it with a standard program and uh, provide some type of assistance to the communities that wanted to do. After 9-11, uh, uh, well, the need was even bigger. And around the first years of uh, 2000, 2001, 2002, 2003, is when the program really picked up and most communities started to implement it. In Montgomery, that was 2003. Uh, last year, we have our 10th anniversary. Uh, what, uh, how CERT help? The idea is to provide training, to provide training to people so they, we know what to do, when to do it, and how to do it, when to intervene, and how to do it. The training includes some basics, like you can read there, fire extinguisher, uh, first aid, triage, how to deal with, if we have a mass casualty type of uh, uh, <coughs> event, how to deal with all these people that have some type of injury, some more important than others, so that's uh, what we do with triage, kind of uh, classifying, sorting the people. If this has to go first, it has to go later. Uh, SAR, search and rescue. Obviously, we assert not, 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 we don't have the capabilities that a team like uh, Task Force One in Maryland or Virginia or all the states have. Uh, they are professionals, but we have training to do, let's assume we have a tornado. And some houses are not completely destroyed, maybe F0, F1. So we can go and do search. We have the basics of how to do it safely, and where to search, and how to search. Uh, how to do a lift and a carry, how to carry a person, what to use. We may not have a stretcher, may, may have nothing. What element we can use that we have ready, available there, to do a carry, to move the person on to, from an unsafe place to another place. Do some damage assessment. Go out and look what happened, and reports. Um, this is important because when the county asks for state assistance, it has to 
justified. It has to be basically an amount of damage for the state to assist the county. And same thing is for the state to ask the federal government for assistance. So it's important to go out and do a damage assessment. Look for hazmat. You have a, a, something like a derecho. You have houses down. You may have gas leaks. You may have elements that have, you may have in Home Depot. They have chemicals there. They are all spread all over the place. How to assess that? How to, uh, and somehow avoid people going there. And then some basic of how to deal with the psychology of people during a disaster. For us and for the victims. To be prepared, you may want to go and help somebody and that person may be violent mm -hmm. because of the, of the incident. They, so how to deal with those, how to cope, how to, we may see things that no one wants to see and how to cope with those. You see there are NIMS and ICS, those are standard ways of organize this type of activities. When you have a big event, those that are right there first have to do whatever is needed, but there have to be some organization. Somebody has to be leading the group. You may need to have different groups. Those groups have leaders, how they report to each other, how they communicate. Those are set up by FEMA in a way that everything across the country works the same way. So if tomorrow we have to go help in Virginia, or in PG, we may have some small differences, but we can work together. We have the same structure, we can all work together. Uh, that, when you go to, the, the first part of the list is provided by the county. NIMS and ICS, those are trainings provided by FEMA, and those are online. You can take them if you want, or you, if you don't want to take them, that's okay. You don't need to take them. That's really useful, and I will, we'll see later that there is some need for that and when you are required to do it. In Montgomery County, we provide basic radio procedures, operation. That's not required by FEMA. But in, in Montgomery County, it is provided. We think that is necessary that is useful, uh, you cannot give a radio to a person that never used the radio and expect to do it right. And CPR and AED, uh, defibrillation, those are things that are not required by FEMA for CERT, but in Montgomery County, is part of the training is provided with no cost to any uh, trainee. So basically, what are our roles? Two. One is to assist during an emergency, during a, any event, unexpected event. It may be weather related, it may be uh, some kind of a, a gas leak, a flooding. We don't intervene when it's terrorist. The terrorist uh, events, that's we don't have anything to do with it. That's law enforcement and other organizations. We are away, away from that. And the other part, which is important, very important, is to provide what is called emergency preparedness. To go to the community and basically teach them how to get ready, how to be in your workplace, how to be at home, have to be anywhere, and be ready. If something happens, know what to do, have the elements needed to do it, and maybe, if it's the case, help the community. The idea is to have individuals prepared to deal with any type of emergency event for themselves, for their family, for their friends, their co-workers, their community, any place where they happen to be at the moment of the emergency. 
And that's what the preparedness program is. Obviously, it's included in CERT, but we also provide that for the community. In what uh, situations we work? Evacuations. If we have, uh, well, we don't have here tsunamis, but we have flooding, and if we are, we know of an impending flooding, we can go and assist either the police, the firefighters, to realize that, uh, to, to proceed with the evacuation, to help move the people from one place to another. Uh, neighborhood windshield surveys or on foot assessment, that's what, what I mentioned before. After an event, go out and start analyzing what happened. How many houses are completely destroyed, how many houses are damaged but not severely, how many houses can be occupied again or not, and report all that to the, all that to the county. They will put all the information together, obviously, and then do the, the report they need to do. SAR, uh, search and rescue, I mentioned before, light, we call it light, not for complicated situations. Uh, trauma, triage, be able to go and help a person, how to do an splinting, how to deal with bleeding, how to deal with shock, what to do, have the elements to do it, and move the person to a centralized place where later the emergency response will take care of that. The idea, what is important is that we are supposed to work until law enforcement, emergency response, arrive to the scene. That usually will happen when you have a big catastrophe that they cannot arrive, they cannot go to the place where that happened for whatever reason, the, the roads are blocked, trees are down, or because it's that big that they are overloaded, they cannot take care of everything. That's when we will uh, act when we provide our service. But it's also important that you, everyone, the community, know what to do. Not just sitting and complaining or just waiting for somebody to come to you. Do what you need to do. Be prepared for, for that type of situation. Shelters operations, we... Uh, shelter is something that normally is uh, done by the Red Cross. We assist them with the setup of the shelter when it's required. If we ask to, we, we help them. Crowd control in events like uh, uh, the president's presidential inauguration or events of, of that uh, nature, we can go and help law, law enforcement to manage the, the, the crowd, to help the crowd in some situations. That's also part of our Carlos, a couple of additional uh, backup ones before you would uh, would go on there. The um, one of the, the main things tenants assert is to do the greatest good for the greatest number, to not uh, bring another casualty to the scene, and to be situationally aware so that you know, uh, like the the song says, know when to hold, know when to fold, and know when to get out of there, so that uh, you don't bring another casualty to the scene, so that you don't become involved in, in uh, needing to be to recover to, to someone to help you uh, that particular photograph you see there and we'll talk about this later on in detail but that's one of the photographs from a, a recent training last october we had the privilege to participate with uh, a joint uh, capital shield exercise that particular one was at davidson army airfield in uh, fort belvoir where we had a chance to uh, <coughs> not only gather up the people, bring them to the casualty collection point, but also to transport them, uh, assist in transporting them by way of ambulance bus to the uh, evacuation site and physically uh, participate in loading them onto the, uh, the helicopter. That was a new piece of training for us and uh, we are uh, privileged to be allowed into that, uh, that group. Go ahead. Thank you. Training. The training that uh, we provide is 
normally three times a year. Uh, that for the last year that have been the case, we always try to, to do that. Is one session in winter, one in fall, and one in springtime. We don't have any session in summertime because there are many people on vacations, and so it, it, it didn't make sense. We found that that's not something that we want to do. As I said, we follow FEMA curriculum with some additions to that curriculum, including CPR and AED. Uh, and the CPR um, that we did this year is the whole CPR for adult, infant, uh, child, and infants, and AED. The participants of the, of the training of the classes are provided with a basic kit. The basic kit is a backpack with basic tools and a hard hat, mask, gloves, uh, medical gloves, everything you need to be ready in a case of a, you are called to help. Or maybe just that in your neighborhood without nobody calling, but you have the elements ready to go. It's open to everyone. Everyone that lives in the county can register, can take the, the class, and enjoy the benefits of knowing what to do and being ready, and being ready also to help. And if you would want to uh, to proceed further with us to become a, an active member, that means to register, to background check, and so on like that, then you would be issued a, a county volunteer credential when you complete successfully completed the uh, the background check. At that point, you'd be eligible to to, to deploy with us in uh, and train with us. If you chose not to do that, we would still provide you the the backpack, and we would. Uh, encourage you to, uh, to stay safe, be aware, and uh, participate uh, in your community in the event that uh, something bad happened there. You could help, you'd be in place, you could help mitigate it. You wouldn't have to have your uh, credential, you wouldn't have to come with us, but you would know what to do, you'd have an understanding of how things work, and then you'd be able to, uh, to proceed accordingly at that level or at the, uh, the full participation level, credential check, etc. Yeah, one, one thing that is important, and some people ask me, why you give the people the training, the kit, and if they, they don't want to become members, what is all that if money that the county is throwing away? And they don't sell. It's one person or less that the community have to rush to help. You will have help, but you know how to deal with the problem till somebody arrives. If we all were in that situation, things will be much better. So even if you don't want to participate as an active member or self, of self, you are still helping the community by being able to take care of yourself. Now we have a new program that started um, last Saturday. It's called Storm Camp. And this is uh, it's a dual purpose. On one side is preparedness, because that training is family-oriented. We provide training for family groups. The families are divided in, in two different uh, sessions, one for kids, one for adults. And the idea is to give them an, a better understanding of what is served and give them the initial step of preparedness. How to be ready, what, what kit you need to, to have at home to be ready for an emergency. First aid kit, food supplies, water, everything that you may need for two or three days. Really you can be helped or the problem is over. The program for the kids is called Ready Pirates. It's a kind of a game. They will have coloring books. They have games. But it's all oriented to prepare. Yes. And, and also for the children we had at this particular event, the uh, some of you may be familiar with the fire safety house that uh, lives at Station 8 in Gaithersburg, the uh, volunteer fire department 
at uh, Gaithersburg operates that to show children in a, a trailer kind of situation. They have a couple of rooms set up and they show children what might happen, uh, how to respond, where to get out, et cetera, like that. At this particular event, there was also uh, equipment, an ambulance was uh, on station to, uh, to show that, and I believe also some firefighters were there to explain some things that uh, firefighters do in an emergency so that the children up to age 12, probably age 6 to age 12, that uh, elementary school range, had the opportunity to, to see and visit uh, or have them come, have the thing come to them and understand about uh, emergencies in uh, an actual situation where they could walk through what to do and, and how to do it. Yes, and they also got the uh, part of the program, they also have a, a police officer talking to them and they being able to ask questions. So to get them more familiar with the, the, the whole overview of the emergency and law enforcement services. And this particular program, uh, while it's, it's brand new, I believe the next iteration is coming up on May 10th in yeah. Germantown, this is a search light, if you will. A lot of folks don't have time to take uh, 30 hours worth of training and may not need or want it, but this is a, a quick overview so that you can see, the community can see what's involved in search, should they choose to uh, continue, should they have an interest to pursue that at a, a deeper level, then uh, they can come and take our um, basic class, our 30 hour class, 20 from FEMA plus our 10 hours worth of add-on to allow the, uh, the individual A to first see it in the storm camp environment and then uh, B to pursue it at, uh, at length. Uh, I, I, uh, there is, I will give you the information, uh, there is a, a website Montgomery CERT, which is montgomerycert.org. If you go there, you will find that there is one entry for a storm camp where you can register for the next class. Don't do it now because it's still, you will find that one that was last Saturday, but next week is going to be updated and you can register for the next one, which is May 10th. And it's in Germantown. It's, a, it's close to the uh, community center in Germantown. I don't have the address, but everything will be there. So if you have interest, go to the, our website and you will find the information there. After 10 years of, of this program being in place, we have now about 350, maybe a little more now, uh, active CERT members. <coughs> what they do, or what you will do if you want to become a CERT member, we provide continuous training. Uh, that continuous training is uh, additional training. Uh, it's also refreshers, like the CPR, but we all know, most of us know that CPR is valid for two years and then you have to renew it. Um, but we provide it every year because we think it's important. And if you're gonna be helping the community, you should need to know how to do it and how to do it right. Uh, additional training, we also uh, receive training from the uh, Metro, in what is Metro Safety and Security. Um, that's something that the Metro system provides to all the search groups in the area. So it's a specific of Metro, and we learn there how to deal with a problem in, in, the, in the Metro station, if uh, there were an accident, how to deal with uh, in, the, in the tunnel, how to make the calls to the operation center. And there is also uh, a, a drill, a practice that is done, I don't remember if it's in Landover. They have a special setup where they have a mock-up tunnel with a car inside, it's inclined, and when you do the the exercise there to know how to deal if you were to find yourself in that situation. Um, that additional training, we also provide training for active shooter that we have today, another one in Texas. Uh, oh. That's it, it's, it's happening too often now. Um, power, we have people from, from the ECHO coming and explaining us how to deal with power. The, what happened when the power lines are down, how to deal with them, how to stay away, 
how to be careful, basically. Um, and many other training. We have uh, hazmat awareness. There are not always the same, but if you are a member, you have access to all this training. It's not mandatory, but you can take it, you can take advantage of, of that and learn new new things. Drills and exercises, I mentioned the one for Metro. We also do at least two a year. One is called CERTCOM, which is an exercise with the CERT groups in the area, e.g. Fairfax, DC, Montgomery County, and maybe some other one. And then <coughs> Cap Shield, which is that picture there, where that's with the military. And it's the idea of those exercises, if we have to act in an event, in, in any emergency, we will be there till the real guys show up, being that the firefighters, EMS. At that point, we have to transfer, and we have to know how to transfer the control, how to transfer the information, and more important, how to transfer the people to them, for them to take care. And th that is what those exercises are for to have all the different agencies working together and knowing what to do if we have to do it for real. They are fun, they are interesting, and we learn a lot. Another activity is outreach. Um, what we normally do is we go places like this one here. Uh, this one here is the, the fairground, the agriculture fair. We have a booth there, and we inform people, we distribute uh, brochures, uh, we inform them about the, the CERT training and how to be ready. Uh, basically, this is something that you find in brochures of this kind, where you have the basic steps of what to do at home to be ready. Uh, this one is in a community center where they ask us to go and, and explain them what is there and how to, they should uh, be prepared. This is at the fire station, and this, I don't know, but this is some other event. And basically, but, but, but uh, for you to know, what have done CERT during these last 10 years? 10 years of... Uh, like that said has. It was created in 2003, and in 2006 there was the first real need for CERT to provide services, and that was, I don't know if you remember, that was a really um, rainy spring, and need was, the, 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 the dam in need was there, which is just an air dam. Nobody was sure if it's gonna be put there, and so, we have to, the people downstream have, come, downstream have to be evacuated, and we assisted law enforcement to, to do that. And something similar with the Sligo Creek, and it was the same year, was the same rainy season. In 2009, for the inauguration, uh, CERC had people deployed in the different metro stations, assisting the people that was coming and, and going to the inauguration, not in the inauguration itself but here in the county, helping people uh, when they were coming back. You know, they have, there was a big crowd that needed some direction. Uh, the Snow Magellan in 2010, we have people going out with the firefighters, basically. And so what that uh, provided is that they need to have two people per truck. They cannot go alone. By we going with them, that had allowed them to duplicate the amount of people on the road doing their job. Mm -hmm. It's uh, that's a, a force multiplier kind of thing where the the lieutenant and his uh, buggy, if you will, uh, was able to, with one of us, and it was able to to continue on. We provided. Uh, transportation. We also provided uh, eyes and ears out in the community. I helped the guy shovel a fire hydrant or two. Uh, we stopped in and visited at uh, the emergency room in Germantown at uh, some of the other 
apartment type uh, senior center places in Germantown, but that gave, that's the, I was assigned at Station 22, but that, that was the kind of thing that, that we provided. Also, emergency transport, the guy in Damascus that had to get to Rockville to work a shift with the uh, Rockville City, or perhaps um, that early that next morning we had uh, a call that somebody had to get to the hospital, not emergency, but they had surgery scheduled that could not be postponed, so we we made sure that the individual got from their home in, I think, Rockville down to Holy Cross, for example. But those kinds of things are force multiplier examples that the CERT team, the credential deployable CERTs, can uh, provide when requested by our parent organization, the Department of Fire Rescue in Montgomery County. Thank you. Another, and this is more, uh, oh, I was forgetting one. Um, for the golf tournament, we also provide help there with uh, the golf cars going around, making sure that the people, it wasn't really, you were there, I believe, mm -hmm. uh, it was a really hot uh, day. So making sure that the people was okay before the things were really bad and they, had, we, they need to have the ambulance coming in. Our goal there was to act as, uh, again, extra eyes and ears force multiplier, but also to uh, identify situations in advance of need, if you will. If we see somebody that doesn't look like they're feeling so well, we can engage them in conversation, offer them a bottle of water. They had a couple of cases on the back of the golf cart for us to pass out to individuals so that we can uh, preempt the um, basic ambulance service call a BLS or, well, I don't know if we could prevent or preempt an ALS call, advanced life support, but uh, we were out there, we were providing support to the fire department, acting as representatives of the Department of Fire Rescue to this, uh, the clientele at the AT&T golf tournament, a very high-end country club type uh, environment where you behave properly and professionally and they liked us, they invited, uh, I believe they invited us back, but uh, we were duly noted for assisting and when we're out there catching the problem before it occurs, then the BLS guys on the ambulance don't have to go out there, disrupt things and, and pick up the individual after the fact. In 2012, uh, there was the opportunity to help set up, set up a shelter at White Oak and last year, when we have the tornado that went through Rockville, um, what we were able to do is to provide that type of on-the-spot assessment and send the information back to the EOC. And when that happened, they were immediately aware of the calls are coming, it's a line. This is where the tornado is going. So they were able to act and more than react. That, that, that makes a big difference. We were able to provide the ground truth to confirm what they were seeing and hearing on their, um, from their other sources. We confirmed that for them and they had instant confirmation, not on, in this particular situation, not unlike the, uh, the Skywarn weather spotters, that kind of a function that we were able to provide from our level into the overall data and have it aggregated and know what was happening. Um, this year, uh, this winter, we provide some similar service, but what we call the, the, the SIP trip, the situation reports, uh, with all the different snowstorms we have. And luckily, not, there were no big problems from this power or nothing big, but we were able to provide the EOC with information up to the minute what was happening in the building during that storm in the whole county. And so basically we are there ready to lend a hand when it's needed in any emergency, go there and help the people, maybe get out of a building, maybe uh, take them out from a park, whatever is needed. Um, take care, at least the provide first aid including, if need be, uh, CPR uh, to the community. We can also share that pictures there uh, show that was in Haiti. 
during the earthquake in Haiti, and some people went there to help. <coughs> All the people you see with the best, they are not served. They received the best. They uh, they were uh, Haitian people, and the people you see below are it's our people that went there. So this is basically all about CERT. Um, I s say to all of you, thank you for listening to me. And yes, now I believe we are going to take questions. Yes. I was wondering, did you talk, mention Taco a bit about liability, asking permission for people to help? Is it OK to help them? Uh, and how are you alerted? Uh, how do you, uh, are you on call? How do you, do you deploy? And what's the nature of the use of radio communications over other kinds of communications? Well, um, yes, when we are going to that part of the training, when we uh, see somebody that we think may need help, we will ask if they want to be helped. And if they say no, we will say okay, and we will move. It. Uh, unless the person is unconscious that when that is what it's uh, implying consent, so we will help in that case. Uh, regarding uh, how we are called, um, they, they said system with records of all of our information, we will receive a phone call, an SMS, an email, everything that we can receive to make sure that uh, we are aware of, of the, the problem. Uh, as we don't, we don't have to forget that we are volunteers, and one of the uh, things we receive in the training is, first, we have to make sure that we are okay, that our family is okay, uh, before going to take care of anybody else. Uh, if, if that is the case, then we will go to whatever place we are, we are being called to go, and provide the help that is required from us. Again, we operate under the auspices of Department of Fire Rescue. We are drilled repeatedly that we do not, we meaning sir, do not self-deploy. We have to wait for a call. We have to be called in. And when that happens, then we come under an, a liability umbrella of the uh, county fire rescue, which is maybe why they don't call us very often. However, we have a good track record and I believe an excellent safety record. With regard to uh, notification, as he mentioned, it's mostly through commercial communications at this time. I've, as the communications lead for the group, I've been trying to encourage along an alternate means of communication. I believe there's a plan in the back of somebody's mind, whether it's actually reached paper and uh, gone through the planning phase, I can't say right now, but uh, there is uh, awareness.